Today we will be discussing Lab 4 Affinity Chromatography. In this lab we will be using Cybercron Blue F3GA dye bound to an agarose bead to separate out the lactate dehydrogenase in our sample from the other bulk proteins in our sample. Cybercron Blue F3GA can be used for a number of applications for protein removal. In this application we'll be using its distinct ability to bind to the dinucleotide recognition site on LDH. Here a mixture of the beads and buffer are combined into a column and the liquid is allowed to drip out, creating a solid column from the agarose beads. Here 10 milliliters of sample is being added to the top of the column, being careful not to disturb too much of the resin at the top of the column. Important thing to note is your sample volume will be completely different depending on how much volume was used to bring up your sample after the desalting. Make sure to record this volume. The pipette is tilted slightly so that the sample drips down the side of the column instead of directly onto the top of the bed. It's important to keep the bed relatively undisturbed so that sample can uniformly distribute throughout the bed. You can see here the dark blue beads at the bottom and the milky sample being delivered above. You must work quickly in order to keep your sample from warming up too much, so it's important to keep the column dripping at all times. This will allow your sample to be pulled through the column, allowing you to work as quickly as possible. Make sure that your sample is dripping at an even pace from the end of the column. Note that in this example there are three tubes to the left that have been filled with fluid. Two of these tubes are being used as reference tubes. The third in the middle is actually a sample tube that needs to be removed and placed on ice. The two reference tubes are filled with the approximate amount of fluid that we want to collect for each fraction. In this case, you'll be using either 2.5 or 3 milliliters. As sample drips into the tube, you can compare the sample volume in your tube to the sample volume in the reference tubes. This will allow you to estimate the amount of sample that you have collected. This will be important for constructing your graph later on. After all of your sample has entered the column, you will need to add Tris PMSF buffer to the top of the column in order to keep it from drying out. If your column begins to dry out, cracks will form which will allow your sample to flow through the cracks, bypassing the column completely and directly into your sample collection tube. You will add the Tris PMSF buffer slowly like you added the sample, not disturbing the top of the column as much as possible. You will need to keep adding Tris PMSF buffer to the column as long as you are collecting sample. You will read the absorbance at 280 nanometers of these samples. When that absorbance is below 0.1, you can continue to the next step, which is the NAD wash. Once it is time to add the NAD wash buffer, you must remove the remaining Tris PMSF buffer from the top of the column. You can do this using a transfer pipette, a 1 mil pipette, or your larger volume pipette. Here I show beginning with a 1 mil pipette and then decide to move to a larger volume pipette because there is a larger volume on the column than a 1 mil pipette can handle. Once all of the liquid has been removed, 10 milliliters of NAD wash is placed on the column, being careful not to disturb top of the column. Again we will collect fractions until the absorbance at 280 nanometers falls below 0.1. At this point we will go to the next step, which is the NADH wash, where we will be removing our LDH from the column. In this final step we are adding NADH wash to the column. The NADH wash will pull the lactate dehydrogenase off of the Cibercon Blue F3GA bead. This will cause the LDH to flow through into your sample collection tube. So keep in mind that these collection tubes will contain LDH and therefore will need to be cooled as soon as possible. This is an example of the graph you will be creating for this lab. The arrows indicate the points at which the sample was added, the NAD buffer was added, and the NADH buffer was added. 
Notice that there are sharp increases in the absorbance at 280 nanometers, corresponding to the points when the wash buffers were added. This is because different proteins are coming off within these wash buffers. Also notice that the red line indicates activity within the sample. It's important to notice that during the NADH wash is when all of the LDH activity is coming off of the column. These are the samples you are going to be pooling and using for the rest of the semester, so be careful with these samples.